Have you ever had a dream that you were flying? Most of us have. For some of us, we want to turn that dream into reality. And once we catch the aviation bug, there isn't much that can stop us from making that dream come true. For some, we want to fly with the airlines. Others, we want to serve in the military. And for the rest, we just want it to be a hobby. But once it's time to start training as a student pilot, it can be difficult to know which tools are necessary and beneficial. Two of the questions I get asked the most are, is Microsoft Flight Simulator beneficial for a student pilot? And what and how much is your flight simulator setup? I'm gonna answer all of these questions in this video, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So just like the intro said, this is a video a lot of people have been asking me for. What's my flight sim setup? How much did it cost me? And do I think Microsoft Flight Simulator is beneficial for a real world student pilot in training? I'm gonna answer that question now and tell you that yes, I do think it's beneficial. It helped me immensely. I'm gonna highlight why. However, I want to caution you that it can also be a huge disservice at the same time. So when I bring those points up, pay really close attention, okay? As far as my flight sim setup is concerned, I use the Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo Flight Yoke and Throttle Quadrant. I have nothing but amazing things to say about it. It's super immersive with all of the different switches and levers. You can actually do an entire engine startup and run up checklist using just the hardware alone, except for one small part. And I'm actually gonna show you that in this video. I know when we get started with our training, we're afraid to start up a plane and do something wrong. And this is a great way to really kind of run through with your actual hands and get used to how it feels, okay? I'm also going to show you a side-by-side -side of Microsoft Flight Simulator alongside a real-world flight that I did. It's actually one of my first solo flights, and I'm gonna use that to highlight the realism of the sim with the airport layout, the surrounding terrain, and all of that fun information, okay? So, with that being said, let's get started. All right, here is a Cessna 172 engine start checklist using only the hardware of the Honeycomb Alpha and Bravo yoke and throttle quadrant, okay? We're doing this as if though I've already done my pre-flight inspection, my walk around, all of that stuff. We're strictly starting with the engine start checklist so I can highlight the features of this, okay? Now keep in mind as I do this, uh, the steam gauge 172 on Microsoft Flight Simulator is fuel injected, so there's no carb, uh, there's no primer, you know, uh, lever over here, so on and so forth. So when it comes to anything that I need to do for this model specifically, I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of gloss over it. I'm only going to highlight the uh, checklist that I'm using, okay? So for starters, I'm gonna actually get rid of this yoke just to make it a little more easy for you guys to see. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the parking brake. I'm gonna get my fuel selector to both. Great, okay, here we go. So, starting off, primer we obviously have to skip. Mixture, I have my mixture knob over here and I'm going full rich. And throttle, we wanna open it up about a quarter of an inch you have to use your best judgment. That's about a quarter of an inch. From here, master switch is coming on. Oops, there we go. All right, now that my master switch is on, I wanna make sure my beacon light is on. And you can see down here is the beacon light. Let me kind of knock that yoke over a little bit. Down here is the your lights. My beacon light is on. All right, brakes. Uh, I'm not able to do that right now because I am have the camera set up in front of my system, but uh, you know, I have my parking brake on. Great, so prop area, we would say clear prop. And then now we actually have our ignition switch down here. Now keep in mind one thing with this. When you go all the way over to start in a real 172, it will spring back and stay on both. This one, you have to manually push it uh, back to both, okay? If you don't and it stays in the start position, your 172 will actually go through um, an electrical failure and all the electrical systems will turn off. So keep that in mind. So we've yelled clear prop. I'm gonna actually raise the camera a little bit so you can actually see the propeller kind of start off uh, up here. All right, so clear prop and starting and back to both. Now instantly we're going on to the next one. Um, I'm going to get the throttle at a thousand Perfect, my throttle is at 1,000 RPMs. My oil pressure needs to be rising. It has all of those gauges down here, okay? All of your fuel, your oil, so on and so forth, okay? So here's the oil pressure over here. 
All right, now one thing about this, I've noticed that it does take a little bit of extra time for uh, the oil pressure gauge to go up. It does eventually go up, but you kind of have to suspend your disbelief. Um, from my experience in a real 172, you see this going green significantly faster than what you do on Microsoft Flight Simulator, okay? So ammeter check. Again, the ammeter takes a minute to kind of set to zero, but it does eventually set to zero, a little slower than in the real world. Um, but again, you have these tools to actually practice if you're just starting out your aviation journey. So from here, mixture, we want to lean for taxi. So you can actually lean this out as you see it happening on the screen. Flaps up, there is a old school, you know, 172 flaps lever here. I'm actually going to show you the external view of my plane. I'm going to hold this up. And just so you know, if I were to let go, it would stop at each step along the way. Uh, but when you pulled it up, it will go all the way. And as you see there, the flaps went up. Okay. Moving on from here, avionics switch going on. Turn on my avionics, and you will see all the stuff come alive on the simulator, just like you do um, in the real world. So we're going to give that a minute to charge up. And then we obviously need to get our ATIS or AWOS, all of those things, so once that powers up. So from here, this is one of the only things that you can't uh, use your hardware for, is dialing in radio frequencies. Um, there are add-ons for Microsoft Flight Simulator where you can have a, an actual you know, radio common GPS system, but I don't know if that's actually worth the money. I mean, it's not that hard to come over, and all of these knobs are and buttons are accurate to what they are in, you know, the real 172s that I've flown, so I think I don't have a problem coming up and just using the mouse to kind of dial in radio frequencies. So from here, enter, enter, and there we go. Now, because I started my uh, flight within Microsoft Flight Simulator at North Las Vegas Airport, which is where I fly, uh, it's already kind of putting in some of those frequencies for me. Um, but as you see, uh, so like 121.7, is our ground frequency. One, two, I'm gonna zoom in on this. One, two, five decimal seven is our tower frequency. So you can actually go ahead and come over here and click, scroll down. As you see, it's this easy. I personally don't need a, you know, an add-on to have the physical thing. So there you go. And then from here, you can go ahead and do your, uh, standby. Now sometimes it glitches like that. I don't know why. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong in terms of a Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, setup and startup, but in the real world that doesn't happen like that. So just something to keep in mind. It's probably just a quirk of the system and I'm probably not using it 100% accurately. But if all else fails, you can come up here. You have this ATC button. And when you do that, you're going to get this drop down over here and you can tune into the ATIS. So I can actually tune in North Las Vegas Airport Information Officer 1800 can move on with our checklist. So the ATIS is good. Altimeter, so I want to take a moment. So the altimeter, I just set this to clear skies for now and conditions just to make it easy for you guys. But um, you can come in here and actually dial in your altimeter. Let me try to pan up here. So I'm gonna get really close on this altimeter here. You can actually um, adjust things. And you can turn on live weather with Microsoft Flight Simulator and it will actually give you the current condition. So when you dial in the ATIS, or when you call it the ATIS, it will actually give you um, the airport's current altimeter setting, conditions, all of that. So you can try to make your flying on the flight sim as realistic as possible. Um, but again, I just wanted to show you the perks of the honeycomb uh, setup. And I'm gonna do a flight here to show you how realistic the uh, flight controls are, as well as the area that you might be flying. In this case for us, it's going to be North Las Vegas Airport today. So for GPS, 
you can also come over here and you can do uh, all the dialing in for this. So when you come over here, you can scroll over and you can do all of this stuff. I can, you know, say if I want to come over here and fly to, I don't know, Henderson. I'm not going to do that today. But say if I wanted to, you can uh, come into here, actually do it. And then from here, uh, sometimes it's a little picky with these to click the right one. There you go. So now here's Henderson. You can use your direct to enter it in, activate it, boom, you're good to go, come back, and then now your navigation is going to show all that stuff. So you can use this exactly how you would use it in the real world and practice your GPS systems that way too. Okay? So, but we are going to ignore that today. That is not the flight that I'm going to do. So flight instruments are set as the next part of the checklist. We come over here and, you know, check our basic things. Our airspeed isn't doing anything weird. Um, turn coordinator's fine. Uh, you can also adjust this, by the way. Um, again, it's kind of not really working with me very well, but you can adjust your uh, attitude indicator. Um, heading bug. Um, I'm going to take off on the one twos today, so I'm actually going to go ahead and set my uh, heading bug for one two. Coming over here. It takes a little bit for these, you know, that's one of the downfalls of this. But I can get this lined up with one, two, so that way I know when I'm on the runway, I am good to go. Um, but yeah, flight, instru or, uh, flight instruments are all good. So from here, we would take out our airport diagram, uh, we get our taxi clearance, you know, all of that stuff, whatever. But we can turn on our taxi light now, which is this switch here. So our taxi light is now on. Um, brakes, we would do a brake check, but again, I, uh, I, I can't do that right now because of my camera set up. So now what we're going to do is we are going to taxi over to the run-up area and I'm going to show you the actual layout of um, the ramp and taxiways here at North Las Vegas Airport, okay? With side-by-side -side of a real-world uh, recording that I did of me flying recently. All right, here's a real-world flight of mine alongside Microsoft Flight Simulator and I want you to pay attention to the similarities because it's pretty amazing, okay? Here in a minute, the two planes are going to meet up at the exact same point on the ramp, and that point is right about here. And you're going to notice from here on out, every taxi line that you could possibly turn on to, every little curve that exists in the real world also exists in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Even this little detail coming up right here, where you have this sort of turnout followed by this little double turn, exists. And then also pay attention to that terrain in the background. You're going to notice the mountain peaks are the exact same heights in the sim as they are in the real world. And that's great for if you're flying in an area that has all sorts of uneven terrain. Um, and, you know, I can just give testament to Microsoft Flight Simulator because I started playing around on the flight sim before my actual training started. And before my training started, I knew the entire layout of North Las Vegas Airport because of this. I was able to know how to taxi to the run-up area without getting lost. You know, I knew the terrain that I was getting myself into whenever my cross-country or my practice sessions were going to be coming up. And then right here, you even have the whole run-up area that exists. So it's great to learn familiarity. I'm going to get to, in one second, why um, it's actually a disservice. But for now, let's go ahead and do the full engine run-up checklist. All right, we've taxied over to our run-up area, so now we are going to do our run-up. So make sure we're going full rich. Throttle, we're moving up to 1700 RPM. Right there, perfect. Now, we're going over to our magnetos, and you'll see when we do our magneto check, um, the actual uh, RPMs will drop and rise back up the way they do in the real world accordingly, okay? So from here, Check our right magneto, right? And you see a drop right there. When we go back to both, it will go up to 1700. Perfect. We're checking our left magneto. There we go. There's the drop. And back up to 1700. Right. So from here, what we would do um, is check uh, all of our engine instruments, suction gauge, engine instruments, ammeter. Now, again, just now, after all this time, our ammeter is slowly getting closer to zero, our oil pressure is slowly getting up into the green. In the real world, 
these things happen much faster. Um, but you can still have access to these uh, gauges to still go through the motions of your checklist, okay? So we've done all that. Carb heat again, this plane uh, does not have a carb heat on here. So we're just gonna go ahead and go to throttle idle and make sure our engine doesn't die. And there you go. And as you see, again, all of this is only using the hardware and the actual plane on Microsoft Flight Simulator is reacting to all your controls and it's reacting very similar to how it would in the real world, okay? So throughout, we want to go back up to a thousand RPMs. There we go. Perfect. Okay, mixture lean is required. We still need to taxi over to the runway. Uh, pre takeoff beef, brief uh, flight control. So I'm going to turn the yoke back on for this, okay? You will see that as I move the yoke, it will react the same way on the flight sim. Um, elevator up and down, ailerons, all of that stuff. And then from here, we can go ahead and tap this button here. I have this programmed to go to the outside of the plane, and you can actually check to make sure it's doing everything on the outside of the plane actually as well. So you see the ailerons going up and down there, you see my elevator going up and down, all of that stuff. Let's go back inside of the cockpit. So flight controls are good, flight instruments are all good, fuel gauge is good, fuel selector is on both. Um, trim set for takeoff you will actually see if i come down here let me get rid of the yoke again um we have a trim wheel here and you will see here that as i rotate it it will react accordingly i mean this is a lot easier to do this you know than it is in the real world you have to keep in mind this is also meant for people to practice uh you know jet flying for say boeings or something like that or anything so this trim wheel is the most accurate in terms of tension, but you can still set and adjust your trim, okay? So from here, uh, that is the end of all of our engine stuff. All right, here's another side-by-side -side of the real world with the flight sim. However, this time I've also added on ForeFlight. So you can actually sync up ForeFlight to Microsoft Flight Simulator, and this is an incredible tool because it can help you practice your pattern work at home before you actually show up for your lesson. You can practice those perfect rectangles. You can get familiar with all of the taxiways and runways at your airport. But the other great thing is you can actually practice your cross countries, okay? I was able to do my first solo cross country on the flight sim before I did it in the real world, and that helped eliminate a lot of nerves and questions and things um, that might have came up along the way. Okay, so that's another great thing for that. Now here's the disservice, and this is what I want you to really pay close attention to right here on the takeoff, okay? So a huge part of flying is we need to feel the aircraft, right? With the flight sim, what you're doing is you're inputting a control and you're waiting for a visual cue from the monitor, whereas in the real world, you would have felt that plane take off and you would have felt the climb. You'll feel all of the descents. You're going to feel all of the banks, so on and so forth. And that is something worth paying attention to because if all you're doing is getting used to visual reactions like right here i'm turning in the flight sim and again four flights turning it's a great tool it's one thing to turn the yoke and to see the screen turn and to see okay this is what would happen if i did this it's another thing to feel it okay and feeling the airplane informs you a lot as a pilot so it's worth keeping in mind that you are never going to achieve that unless you want to invest like an extra thirty thousand dollars into your flight sim to have it uh, have full motion but if you're willing to spend that kind of money on your flight sim, I say just spend that money on another endorsement, your actual training, so on and so forth, okay? And on the topic of price. So the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke and the Honeycomb Bravo Throttle Quadrant both run about $250 each, okay? That means for these two things, you're looking at about $500. I use the SciTech rudder pedals, which I didn't feature much in this video, but they are perfectly great rudder pedals. You can adjust the tension to kind of recreate exactly what it would feel like in the real world. Um, I got those for about $150. So right now you're looking at about $650 for the hardware. Now Microsoft Flight Simulator itself, the deluxe edition, which I recommend getting because it actually has the Steam Gauge 172s, which a lot of us use for training, um, runs about $120. Also, Microsoft Flight Simulator is coming out with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024. So it might be worth hanging on for that one. There's going to be a lot of exciting updates for it. Um, again, right here. 
you would feel this descent in the real world you don't in the flight sim. But again, look at the terrain, look at the airport familiarity and the fact that you can sync up for flight and use this honeycomb hardware to do everything with your hands is incredible. It's a great tool. I highly recommend it for student pilots. It made it to where my very first lesson that I did because I had flown around this area so much on the flight sim, uh, we went out to the practice area and my CFI said, okay, it's time to go back to the airport. I knew exactly where to turn. And that doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but I already felt like there's no way I'm gonna get lost because I knew exactly where to go. And for that, I will always recommend flight sim for student pilots. However, keep in mind, you're not going to be able to feel the plane land here on the runway in the flight sim like you do in the real world, and that can cause a lot of reactions from a student pilot, so it's something worth keeping in mind. Let me know if you like this video, and if you want more content like this. Thanks!